Half Moon Taut, regal, she is standing on the pavement in the dark. One arm curls around a mixing bowl, the other ends in a wooden spoon. She is mixing, rhythmically, staring into space. It's night time, Grandma. You need to come indoors. She doesn't acknowledge me. Her stirring continues, batter rolling smoothly in the bowl. The half-moon is clear, sharp in the sky. A car comes past and I pull her back by her apron in a reflex. It rides through a puddle and a wave of water lands on my left foot, just as a glob of batter falls to the ground in a splash. I look down, see another half-moon, its unsteady reflection flickering and wobbling below. I've forgotten my strength. She has staggered back a little onto the heels of her shoes. She trembles and then steadies herself, continues stirring. I'm close now, can smell the crisp lemon and butter in the mix. I guide her by her elbow and we walk up the short path to the front door. My bare feet land on grit and gravel. My dressing gown flaps open a little, bereft of belt, only underwear beneath. She is stately by contrast, an icon. She has painted her face, her nails, her hair into an echo of herself, in hues and pigments of red, so close to what she was, so far. Inside the house, I step in broken eggshells, granules of sugar, lemon peel. The oven is on, the kitchen table is laid for two. What have you been up to, eh, Grandma? Why are you baking so late at night? I take the cake mix from her, and her arms continue to move, ballroom dancing in the gaps where the bowl and spoon were. I walk her through the kitchen into the space that was, once, the dining room. It is now her space. Photos of Grandad dot the room. His tie is on the bed. I lift her arms, remove the apron. I seat her on the bed and slip off her shoes. Automatically, she starts to unbutton her dress, and I notice the blue ribbon of her nighty still on beneath it. When she is ready, I lift her legs by the ankles and slide her under the sheets. She is asleep before I leave the room. Or perhaps she was never awake. In the morning, the sweet and acrid smell of lemons is in the air. I walk downstairs, wondering if I have managed to get up before her, thinking of tea and toast. She is there, sitting at the kitchen table, Head nodded to one side, eyes closed. On the table are two slices of cake, two half-drunk cups of tea, a teapot masked in a cosy in the middle. Binary. Symmetry. I lift Grandad's tie from the crumbs on the table and notice the teeth marks that carve semicircles into the cake, both slices, two halves of the same moon. Half moon. Taut, regal, she is standing on the pavement in the dark. One arm curls around a mixing bowl, the other ends in a wooden spoon. She is mixing.